Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel, and this is our flagship energy program. This is Hawaii, the state of clean energy, every Wednesday at 4. And uh, we are together, Maria and I, and she's wearing a lay today because it's lay day. Lady. It's May Day. Lay day. It's, it's lay law day. day, too. It's it a, is? I don't know why May 1st is such a big deal. Huh, okay. There you go. Maybe it's energy day. Could yeah, be. Yeah, well, it is now. It's energy hour. Okay. <laughs> So we're going to talk some more about the uh, structure of the uh, institutions and organizations that form the landscape in energy in Hawaii, Who energy does what? the state, uh, the clean energy in Hawaii. Yeah. So um, today, let's talk about the, um, the the energy office because that's been in the news lately and okay. in the legislature. Okay. Um, so some remarkable things are happening, or maybe not. Yeah. In the well, legislature. Yeah. So um, there was a bill this session to change the energy office. Now I should back up a little bit and say that the beginning of this conversation was a list that the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum had put together about who does what in the energy area. And we had gotten through page one out of four pages. We're working our way through it. There's plenty to go. And we had kind of talked about what the State Energy Office does. But this year, the legislature um, has changed somewhat where the Energy Office will be. So the bill has had its third reading. So it's um, pretty, pretty much through that part of the process. Mm. And since it was part of the budget, it seems that um, whatever they have in mind is going to take effect. So at some point, I would love to hear from the architects of the bill uh, what it is they, they have in mind. In general, it looks I like... we lived in a democracy uh, where... Transparency well, have, is important, and yeah, by this time, but you got to spend your time listening to the hearings, and I haven't honestly been to the hearings, okay. so there was openness and transparency, but I didn't um, okay, you attend go those. See the I just read, so the part of the transparency I participated in was reading, reading online. Okay, you know, the, all right. the bill. So it does maintain the energy office, but instead of being in DBED, Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism, as one of the divisions, it's being moved out to become a separate entity administratively attached to DBED. And the head of the energy office would then be appointed by the governor and confirmed by the Senate in um, a term coterminous with the governor. So it's an appointed position, essentially. It will be, mm. you know, as far as what let's, that... Let's unpack that yeah, for a yeah. minute, just that one item. Yeah. We'll get to the budget issue later. But that one item, you know, when uh, Neil Abercrombie first became governor, he actually approached the Energy Policy Forum for advice uh, on an idea that he had, which some people yeah. thought was not a good idea which was created an energy authority, an energy, a separate entity, separate government entity, sort of like the Port Authority in New York or the Airport Authority, various states. <clears throat> and he was considering an energy authority. And, and uh, the industry, and for that matter, I think, the, I think everyone, at least in the Energy Policy Forum, felt that that was not a good idea. And uh, there, were, there were some who did, but mostly not. Um, and they advised him uh, with various opinions from various people that he really shouldn't do that. And he didn't do it. He listened. So there was never an energy authority created as a separate entity. And I might mention that that idea had actually come up, you know, every time somebody looks at the energy opportunities, energy challenges, and the complexity, they say, hey, there should be one agency that's tasked with this, and it should be you know, at the cabinet level, you know, or some, something other than a division. So yeah, that yeah. idea actually is yeah. um, fairly well, It's, it's very interesting because, you know, in the legal administration, I got to learn a lot about attached agencies, okay? Yeah, yeah. DBED, I don't know about the other, you know, departments in the state, but DBED has attached agencies. Let me name them for you. There's not very many of them. One is the High Tech Development Corporation, now known as the Hawaii Tech Development Corporation an operating entity. It has classes and programs. It, it gives uh, grants out. It, um, it, it does, it does uh, mixers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Wetware Wednesday there. Okay. Um, you know, it, 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 does, it does tech things. Yeah? Okay. And um, it, has, it had uh, Manoa Innovation Center as an operating yeah. kind of entity. And it, it'll have the sandbox at, at Kakaako now next to the medical school. Yeah. Um, so that, that's an operating entity. Uh, that's one. And uh, it's always been, at least in my time, always been on a pretty thin budget uh, with a small staff. 
smaller now. Robbie Melton left, you know, a few months ago. I'm not sure who's running it right now. Um, its future is not assured. Um, the next one is the HCDA that runs, that runs Kaka'ako. That's an attached agency attached to DBET, I think. And then there's a Kalai Loa. I think that's attached to HCDA. That's part of HCDA. Yeah, right, right. Um, there's uh, Nelha is an attached mm -hmm. agency. Um, Nelha is in uh, Kona, and it has a roughly 900 acres of um, you know tech park or, or an agricultural type tech park out there, um, and that's also kind of an operating entity. It has real assets, yeah. real rent, real expenses. It has deep sea water. All this. It has a lot of people, a lot of things going on all the time. Um, it's a major you know institution in Kona, right next to the airport. Um, that is uh, the uh, Strategic Development mm -hmm. Corporation, the Hawaii Strategic Development Corporation. I think that's uh, been put into HDDC by another bill, but I don't Okay, yeah, all right. Anyway. Well, it's okay to reorganize them because that <laughs> yeah. was not very active and uh, nobody ever granted it very much money. Carl Fuchs was running it. I think he still is technically. Um, and um, did I miss any of them? I think there's another one in the there list, somewhere. But... Uh, so these are, these are attached agencies. They're technically, I guess you could say, they're state corporations which are attached to the underbelly of, of DBED. And they all have their individual executives. Um, they have a board of directors. They all have a board of directors. I served on some of those boards. Um, they all have their own arrangements. On the other hand, they're all subject to the sunshine laws and the, mm -hmm. and the, uh, the procurement code. Ooh, the dreaded procurement code. <laughs> HRS 103D. <laughs> so they act a lot like government, yeah. you know. They um, are. Government. And uh, the appointments of the executive usually made with the governor's uh, involvement uh, and then sort of ratified by the boards. Um, so it's not that we have no experience with, um, you know, these drop-down attached agencies. They have a certain culture about them. They've been functioning for a long time. Uh, they, they, we know how they work. The Attorney General knows how they work. You know, it's got all kinds of policies and programs. So if, they're, if the legislature, in its infinite wisdom, uh, does create the energy office um, as, a, uh, as an attached agency to DBED rather than an, an internal office division of DBED, um, it, there would be a, a certain culture, a certain experience factor that helps. Furthermore, it would, it would respond, I think, to the, the reasons, whatever they were at the time, I'm sure there are many reasons, to create a separate independent, quote, independent authority in energy. And what I come away with, and I'm sure interested in your view of this, what I come away with is it's probably a good idea. What do you think? Well, I... Certainly, I'm glad that the energy office continues. Um, yeah, but there was a question about whether it would, eh? Yeah, yeah. So the first sense is relief, and the second is, okay, well, that'll be different in some ways. And I'm very interested in hearing what they have in mind um, at the legislature and, and elsewhere as this, uh, as this idea begins to grow um, into the reality, I, I guess. Yeah, so but it seems that, you know, so they did some rearranging. Um, they eliminated existing language and replaced it with other language. But to me, at first, it seems that it will have similar functions. It's still going to be the entity that does a lot of the analysis and understands how the pieces work together and communicates that to the legislature and to private industry and the public and so well, forth. Well, we, we so, talked about this before, yeah. didn't we? Uh, yeah. I mean, and, and I think over the years, uh, however the, it evolved, uh, mm -hmm. it was um, more like a data organization than it was a leadership organization. More like, um, you know, backroom record keeping uh, and promulgation than um, actually finding new policy, yeah, um, well, creating implementations. Know, they have definitely done a lot of the policy stuff but it goes through the legislature and very often it's not obvious you know if a legislator introduces a bill and agencies comment on the bill you may not be aware of you know 
how much okay. effort was behind that. Because the, the original RPS was the energy office, um, a creature of the energy office, Hawaii Energy that? Strategy. Yeah, so there were a lot of policies developed within the energy office that then was, were enacted by the legislature and then carried out by whatever agencies were, were tasked with it. But there was one part of the bill that may indicate an uh, increased focus on sustainability and carbon because they are tasked with doing a carbon um, carbon B study. So that's one of the things that they are mm. explicitly tasked mm. with and given money to complete mm. a report mm. on carbon pricing. Mm. So that you know, so that that seems to be at least one of the areas that so, they want additional focus. Mm. And they specifically mention vehicle, the electric vehicles, you know, the transportation side of things, as well as working so with To do what on projects. the transportation side? For example, oh, gee, if I you task that, them yeah. with doing a study, I'm not too interested. I don't think that serves much of a purpose. If you task them with, um, you know, tracking and how many electric vehicles we have in the state, I'm not too interested. It's easy. Um, if you task them with finding initiatives to recommend to the legislature, uh, on policy and implementation, yeah. on, on how we can increase the number of vehicles, yeah. then I'm interested. If you task them with determining and implementing a plan for charging stations, hither and yon, then I'm interested. In other words, I would like to see some real delegation of authority to this organization, like an authority. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, think, I think those were, were in there. But I would, as I said, I would love to hear from the folks who had the ideas about what they want implemented with this new structure yeah. to be able to talk one about more, expand one more upon it. point I like to make and yeah. see if you agree, because I know you're big on climate change. We are all big on climate change. But I have felt over the past few years that climate change has got, um, has got you know, all mushed up with energy. And so we have an energy uh, initiative clean energy initiative, we have goals and targets, we have, you know, these grand plans to improve clean renewable energy sources and distribution in the state, very important. But it's so easy to throw in climate change and say, oh, you guys got to do climate. We have other organizations that do climate change. There's a number of organizations, commissions, state and federal. We have people who are paid well to do climate change. We have a lot of people at the university are doing climate change. Why throw climate change in the energy office? Why not let them do their namesake, energy? What do you think? Well, actually, I think that one of the tasks that they have added was to help fund, to the extent possible, some climate change efforts. So it isn't their primary objective, but it is in there. And since energy is the sector that is emitting a vast majority of the CO2, it's, it's inescapable that what you do in energy will have a climate change impact. Mm -hmm. So if you had an energy office and told them, you don't have to worry about climate change, you could be working at cross purposes mm -hmm. with well, they the should folks be aware who are worried about climate change. But, but know, what, everything they do has an impact. If I give you, on if I give you a, a completely renewable state by 2040 or 2045. Oh, would you? <laughs> if I give you that, <laughs> okay. you, you know, that's about Thank as you, much Jay. as we could possibly do, isn't it? <laughs> You know, then you wouldn't really have to worry too much about the, you know, n carbon emissions because there wouldn't be any yeah, carbon emissions. Yeah, it's not that simple. I know it isn't that simple. And because it would, it's not but simple. But if you can give us that, Jay, I think we'd accept it. Thank we're working you very on much. it. You and I, we're both working <laughs> on it. And we're going to take, we take one minute off to, you know, to think about more about okay. this subject. And then we're going to come back. We're going to talk about other initiatives and other issues that are pending in the legislature and not, um, you know, in the landscape around energy leadership in the state. Wow. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming 
Salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. <laughs> Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at three, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome a studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at three o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Okay, it's lay day, may day, law day, what have you day. And Maria Tomei is wearing a lei today to celebrate that day. And we're talking about what we've been talking about for the last several weeks. We're talking about the landscape of leadership and energy. And we agreed during the break that we really need to spend a little time on science and technology and who is leading the charge on those things here in Hawaii. Um, because after all, you know, there's a lot of technology being developed elsewhere. Um, but we are supposed to be a leader. We're supposed to be at the cutting edge. Uh, we have these uh, ambitious goals. Um, and to reach them, we're going to need the best technology we can get. Um, so how are we doing in terms of science and technology and energy, Maria? Well, I think that Hawaii is one of the most fun and interesting places to be applying a lot of the technologies. And very often when you're building new systems, you realize new ways to do things and synergies, and so you can actually develop, you know, develop some of these ideas. Now, I'm not sure how much of that needs to happen here and only here, because the strongest products and the most successful products are sometimes results of teams. And with the ability to work remotely, you can have the best minds working on these and it, you also have to have good communicators as well. And so what we see being developed here sometimes gets taken another step elsewhere and then eventually comes back to be applied here as Hopefully. well. Hopefully. Well, yeah. You know, it's, it's a global system, right? So, and the, the um, key role that we play, I think, is twofold. One is we're applying and we're using the technologies that we and others have developed. And second is we are communicating about the successes and the failures and um, the improvements to others. And so if we can keep those lines of communication open, not only on the policy side, I know you're very interested on the policy side of developing good ideas and having leadership communicate that idea, those ideas and um, others to adopt them. But the same thing happens in tech, right? You have an exciting development you have it demonstrated somewhere. If you have the ability to take that story out and then take back mm. several years later the next generation of mm. that, that benefits everybody. Mm. So we, we're seeing a lot of the projects that are going to be going in in Hawaii, not just on the solar and the storage side, but also on how do you manage your energy system and on the energy efficiency side because it all, it all connects. If you have an unused room and it's got the lights and the air conditioning and everything else, go, that's waste, right? So to the extent that you can control and reduce your waste, then you're improving the efficiency of everything. You can also do that on smaller scales. And a lot of the nanotechnologies are doing that as well. Some that, comments. Yes. You know, we had Dave Carl, he runs the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education at UH, a very successful research organization. Mm -hmm. Why is it important? Because it's here in these waters, where he has a station Aloha, 100 miles, 100 kilometers north of Hawaii, where he can do research in the ocean. Um, it's a special ocean, and it's near Hawaii. So he has the environment to do the research. There are other organizations. Uh, on the mainland and elsewhere that, that do marine uh, biology and oceanography. Um, but this is a really good place for it. So he has achieved and retained a leadership position nationally 
in this area. It's quite impressive. But part of it is because we are in an environment where we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and there are other good examples of the same thing, uh, where you know, we are in the right environment to do the research, we should do it. Okay, so if you, if you take that same concept and you move it over to energy, we are here. We, we have been, I, I don't know how we are doing this very moment, but we have been a leader in renewable energy. We have all these systems going, the utility is on board, utilities are on board, they're all interested, willing, willing to take a chance to some extent. Um, they're willing to, you know, adopt new technology. They, they look on the mainland, but reality is, uh, wouldn't it be better if, if we were in the place where the energy is happening, in the place where people are talking about and committed to um, these, these targets? It reminds me, actually, I'll stop in a minute. It reminds me, actually, of a program that ThinkTech did back, oh, in the day, of maybe 10 years ago, of, a hotel, of hotel software. And a fellow got up and... He said, and I'll never forget, he said, I do not understand why the hotels in Hawaii go buy hotel software on the mainland. We have all the hotels. We're a destination resort. We have all these experienced people who day to day spend their lives, you know, with guests and rooms and all the, you know, the symbols of hotel software. Why don't we develop the hotel software right here? It, was, it really touched me, but we haven't done that. So the same. Here we are in the middle of Energyville. We should develop it here. We have the people. We have the university. We have the, you know, the, the, uh, the people who can do the tech. Look at HNEI. Mm -hmm. We could be doing all kinds of projects right here. We're the best ones. But let me add something else, and I'll stop. You know, what Dave Carl said and what many people say is you do better science when you collaborate, and you referred to that. So you've got to collaborate. And so the question is, um, do you collaborate by losing your people to the mainland where they do the science there? Or do you, you do the science here and collaborate with people on the mainland, you, but you act as a principal investigator. You act as the leader of the science right here. And the collaboration happens. It must happen because you can't do science without collaboration anymore. You've got to have you know, multiple disciplines and experts come in and talk to each other. But you can use the, the you know, communications technology to do exactly that like what we do in, when we do our remote shows. So what I'm thinking is that it would be best, and it's achievable if we get our minds together, to have the leadership, the science leadership here, be the principal investigators, talk to people on the mainland and everywhere, and develop the technology that would serve our development of energy right here in Hawaii, Nei, without giving up, only always holding on to that leadership position. We can be the center of renewable energy right here. We're not, we're not really doing that now. We should be doing that in science, yeah? Yeah, definitely. In fact, it is happening, but the people who are working on it are extremely busy working and collaborating, so we don't hear about it unless we go look for it. Tell me about it. Tell me about those people. Who is doing what? Well, HNEI is one of the entities Absolutely. you mentioned. And then the other, you know, University of Hawaii, College of Engineering, yep. you know, the various disciplines. Yep. And even some of the um, folks in the private sector who are working with the researchers, <coughs> excuse me, in the, you know, in the universities. And they write the papers that are so exciting to people who know about the topic. But... How do you communicate those advances, which may be just a tiny bit of improvement in the output from, you know, some, a solar cell or in the efficiency of a process that's creating? So how do you create, how do you communicate that to the public, right? They, they want to say, they want to go buy something or they want to see it installed somewhere. And so the distance from the research that's being done and the successes and what the public is interested in is is quite large so we don't really hear about it as much well, as well, well, you know they have to might. listen to our shows yeah. they'll hear about it yeah, yeah. well even our shows you know yeah. i mean if, if you go to, bring to the those I, researchers those in and they come the ieee has conferences here and had the photovoltaic conference yeah, here yeah, a couple yeah, years ago yeah, and whatnot yeah. but as i said it's very esoteric you know we had the energy storage conference on the big island 
It's, it's extremely interesting if you're involved in those industries and you can be excited about the changes that are going to double the efficiency of whatever in five yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. But, um, well, you know, last year there how, was a how program do we tell the story? organized yeah. by HNEI yeah. and, and others, but I think it was a principal organizer with the Germans. Yeah. I don't know if you went to that. It was, a, it was to the East West Center. Yeah. And they had a lot of Germans come. And the Germans are into energy. You know, for them it's harder because. It's colder yeah. <laughs> over there. Yeah. The yeah. sun doesn't shine as much. Um, but they came, and they were really good and fun. They were very affable and, and willing to share and all this. And uh, they really liked our people, and our people really liked them. It was a good move by HNEI to have this kind of collaborative connection. At the end of the day, uh, they were trying to sell us their technology, and we were trying to sell them, I mean, to the extent we can, Tell them our technology. Now, you know, uh, there's lots of reasons for organizing a program like that, and you, and you want that program to happen. But you also want, at the end of the day, that we should be the leaders in this. You want them to come and get stuff from us rather than us get stuff from them, or a combination of those things with, with us at the lead. And I think we should do more of that because that's the kind of collaboration and go a long ways. Yeah. International is dealing with the best of the best, um, you know, and it's learning not only what the solutions are, but what the problems are, because there can be multiple solutions to a given problem. I think, I think we have, um, you know, tons of uh, issues here, tons of uh, things that need to be solved, tons of opportunities to make it better. <laughs> I was better. waiting for you to say that word. Yeah, because yeah, we have a lot of challenges ahead of us. And we a do. Lot of, uh, and we can solve them. Yes. And it's interesting... If we can get the storytellers, not the ones who are making up stories, but the ones who can take the actual advancements and come and explain what people can be excited about. Because there's a lot of speculation. If you're saying, oh, can we get to 100% renewable by whatever year, there's a lot of stuff that will happen, needs to happen, will happen, a lot of stuff that won't happen as well. So you can't really tell where it's going, but you can be involved and interested and follow along as the progress is made. Yeah. But you need someone to explain it to us. So, yeah. And think about it all yeah. day long. Yeah. So if we can get some of those folks to come and explain what HNEI has been doing or what the College of Engineering has been doing, you know, I don't know if UH OTED still does Office of Tech I Transfer. Don't, I, don't, I haven't heard. Yeah, yeah, but I think that's very relevant to our discussions about Hawaii's energy future, not just what are the plans and who's doing what, but also what could we envision happening? Yeah. Yeah. And who's so, doing it and celebrate them because very often they don't get celebrated. Yeah. They go home and if they try to explain it to their family and friends, their eyes are glazed over. So they just kind of work in their own little groups and make their progress Absolutely quietly brilliant. celebrating their successes. So I guess what I hear you saying is that we are going to get these people from HNEI, College of Engineering, wherever it is happening, wherever somebody could figure out a better inverter or better software to, for the grid to communicate with itself. These are huge possibilities, and we can do it right here. We can do so much right here if we just have confidence in ourselves and, and see ourselves as the principal investigators on these solutions. Yeah. Um, so, would you make some calls? If you'll make calls, I'll make calls. Okay. <laughs> you got a deal. Let's <laughs> do you, that. Thank you, Maria. Always nice to talk. Okay. Thank See you. See you next time. Okay, thanks. Aloha. <laughs>